might actually mislead me into, into whether the real risk has been uh, reduced or not. I guess the right answer is probably that mm. yes, but not as much as the numbers uh, suggest. A second question, and, and I didn't think about this uh, before, but of course you were saying the procedures for compression are uh, 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 idiosyncratic to say each maybe uh, CCP or whoever is in charge of doing this, uh, and, and they are opaque. So what about risk of litigation? So the question is if there is a shock that produces the default of one of the counterparties after compression, the losses are gonna be allocated in different way than before compression. So can it be that then expose you litigate for the choice of a particular compression algorithm that is favoring some parties against uh, uh, another? Again, maybe it's unfair to give this question to you. I, I will actually just in the interest of time uh, ask the audience if there is uh, some question from the audience and then the collect all, all these for, for you. Uh, Very interesting presentation, thank you very much. Uh, my question relates to the increased dependence of the system on compression as a technique. Have you put any thought into the scenario under which compression would suddenly cease to be available and that there would be a sudden uh, radical expansion of our margining costs? And what would those circumstances look like? Okay, thank you. I think Marco, you can answer. Yeah. So to answer your first question, Javier, so the problem I think it relates a lot to counterparty risk. So uh, of course you can hedge a lot by going to different counterparties. So you have a net position and then you want to keep hedging and hedging this position. Uh, the main problem is that if your counterparties uh, uh, cannot pay you back, this becomes the, the, the gross becomes relevant. So it is very important that we understand the role of, of growth. And when we talk about size of a market, when we talk about size of a, uh, asset size, liabilities, if we really understand this, uh, um, I think it will greatly help to m also in monitoring and understand where counterparty risk lies. Also, it has an important point in terms of understanding um, how these markets work. So again, one trillion credit default swap on a sovereign does not mean that there is a request for insurance of one trillion. This is a key point that needs to be understood, I believe, in terms also of signaling, probably. The second point about the procedure um, and the litigation, I, 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 cannot answer, um, I cannot answer properly to this question because uh, my legal background is extremely limited. So uh, it's, it's surely uh, an avenue of research. So compression providers, um, I believe, uh, tend to um, uh, work out this type of agreements within uh, master agreements. And of course, if that occurs with the CCP, that's already in, in place. Uh, in case of a default, uh, I don't know, it would be definitely interesting to, to investigate. Uh, dependence on compression technique, to come to your point, uh, I think this is a very good point. So there's a, there's a, there's a research by ISDA recently, uh, came out like a, um, sorry, not that recently anymore, uh, about a year ago, uh, arguing that it, it's actually, if you take into account how much has been commutatively compressed, uh, markets have in, uh, in contrary expanded with respect to the pre-crisis level, to the immediate pre-crisis. So, of course, there are assumptions in, in that research. So one needs to look very much into, into the assumptions that, that go into this, the construction of this, of this figure. So my take is that uh, now we have eliminated a lot in the market, so a lot has been compressed, that could, that could have been compressed. I believe that given the type of the service, in case there, there was a, um, a key provider um, leaving the market, maybe someone else could step in, uh, because there are several um, providers in the market. But this is absolutely a key question that we need to understand. So that is the dependence uh, of, the, of, of market participants from external providers. And this is not a counterparty, again. It is just an external, uh, just external providers. So, the so thank you. I think in the interest of time, uh, trains and flights, we are gonna close here. Uh, thank you to all who stay until the end. Uh, thank you to the ESRB for organizing such a great second conference.